Hey, Steve here with Speed Kings. Today we have the luxury to sit down with our good friend over here, Mr. Jeff Holt from Hot Bike Magazine. Yeah. Um, today we're just going to sit down and, and bullshit and go over a few uh, things, a few topics about motorcycles and uh, some things about Jeff and just have a good time doing it. Jeff, uh, go ahead and tell everybody about yourself. And uh, you know, I've kind of always been on two wheels my whole life. I started my professional career in the bicycle industry and BMX and mountain bikes and road bikes and kind of uh, one day was approached by uh, the editor-in-chief at the time of Hot Bike to come on board and do Baggers Magazine when it just came out. And uh, a decade later, and a, and a bunch of uh, trials and tribulations, and here I am. You, you, you were also responsible for the Street Chopper, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I, the, the reimagination of it, um, I, you know, it came out in 68. And then we kind of uh, it went back and forth and back and forth. It, sometimes it was Hot Bike and Street Chopper. Sometimes it was Hot Bike, no Street Chopper. Sometimes it was Street Chopper with Hot Bike inside. So it's always kind of had this deal where it's going back and forth. Gotcha. Um, I got a hold of it for the 40th anniversary of it was my first uh, deal. And uh, I kind of took all the billet barges out of it. I took all that kind of crap and kind of did what uh, other, th other people that I knew were building at the time. And Dice Magazine, of course, had a lot to do with the times that we started the, the reemergence of Street Chopper. And uh, you know, it was all OG frames or super long frames and it's more skinny stuff, less S&S motors and you know, Big Bear Chopper's crap. Nice, nice. Um, why don't we start with, uh, what do you got in your stable right now? What is your, what is oh. your, your list of bikes that you're working on or, <laughs> um, or what's going on? The with list that? of bikes that I'm working on, um, we, we did a uh, FXDX, an 05 FXDX, and we put a 124 in the stock cases, nice. an SNS kit. I have an all stock 01 Dyna Defender. Um, I have a uh, stock T-Sport 01. I got three or four Sportsters, a couple baggers. Um, couple choppers. Um, the big thing we're doing right now is we're putting a Milwaukee 8 into an FXR chassis. Oh, nice. Yeah, and that's uh, not as easy as a twin cam oh, <laughs> or whatever. That'll be the first, right? Yeah, it'll be the first. Nice. And we're working with Harley Davidson really closely on this, and it'll be debuted at the Born Free Show. Oh, that's awesome. Right. How cool. Right on. What do you, well, going with the Milwaukee 8s, what do you, what's your thoughts of the new bikes? Um, you know, I was kind of, I, I was one of the first people to ride them all pretty in-depthly and, um, you know, I, I've always said that, you know, they're awesome. Yeah. You know, sorry, I, you know, a guy that owns five Dynas, you know, and three FXRs, like, to be able to honestly say that, and you know, a lot of people didn't like it when I first came out and said it, and a lot of people still don't like it now, and it's sorry to say, but it's a superior machine. Yep, it really is. I've been riding mine quite a bit lately, and, you know, uh, I don't know. I love it. I, it's hard to get off of it sometimes. It's just the motor's really good. That that Milwaukee 8 power plant's really cool stock in its stock yeah. form, you know. And we're playing around with some stuff to get a lot of power out of those. Um, the frame geometry is really good. The bike just, you know, all except for the big tire ones. Yeah, um, yeah. All the all the little rear tire ones are great. You can throw them around. They feel like they weigh hundreds of pounds less than they do. Yeah. Um, but I mean, with all that said, there's. There's still something about that early 2000s Dyna chassis with the 39 mils and you know that early twin cam. That's kind of a magical bike. As yeah. long, you know, same thing with like a with a uh, legit FXR. But I think you know, all that aside, the new technology going forward that Harley possesses is is really good. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think they really stepped their game up with this bike, even though there's so many people that hate it still. But I'm definitely seeing a lot more movement of them. I've seen them. Yeah. I've seen a few now on the road. Like I've mm -hmm. seen, you know. People buying them more often, you know. So I think in the next year we're going to see a big yeah, increase definitely. in that for sure. And there's a lot of aftermarket companies, you know, gig from gigantic corporations that specialize in aftermarket stuff to mom and pops in their garage doing yep. stuff for it too. So that's really good to see as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because I know that the new drag book came out the other day, and I'm looking through, and I'm not really seeing anything mm -hmm. for these bikes in there, which is a uh, kind of a bummer. But yeah. you know, I know what's being built, and I know where things are going right now. So it's you know things are coming, but it's a uh, they're definitely going to have to release a couple skinnies on that one. Oh, for sure. You know, <laughs> it's just the way it's going to have to yeah, be with those yeah. guys, you know. But, you know, and, and the whole bagger thing, like their bagger line this year is amazing. Yeah. You know, it's it's blown my mind. And to see guys like Mark from Rusty Butcher really digging it, you know, guy that you would probably never, until those bikes came out, even say the word bagger. Oh, yeah, yeah. You for know, sure. to, to really throw a leg over it. It just goes to show what Harley's doing for the line yep. and, and what they're doing 
stepping it up. You know, they have to now because the, the Indian bikes are really nice. You know, yeah. I hate to say that, you know, and I, I die hard Harley guy and a lot of guys that are dar, die hard Harley guys are like, I'm going to buy an Indian Scout or I'm going to buy an Indian Bagger. And it's, it's, uh, it takes one ride to, yeah. to see the difference, you know, and yep. I think that, that Harley would be in a world of shit if they didn't come out with this new soft tail and this new Bagger. Yeah, I think so. I think they'd, they'd be sitting in a, in a uh, back in the time, you know, the Stone Age, basically, you know, instead of trying to create something that's going to do better. Yeah, and I mean, anybody that, a lot of people don't think about this, but I mean, new platform changes take half a decade to come into fruition. Yep. You know, people don't think that, oh, Harley just slapped this thing together. No, yeah. I mean, they've been, they've spent millions and millions of dollars and countless years to get that together, yep, you know, and true. just like Polaris, once they, you know, bought the Indian brand, they did the same thing, you know, and it's especially with Polaris getting rid of victory and take all the resources and all the design people and everything and putting that into Indian, you know, it's crazy. I mean, I, I was at uh, the Hot Bike and Cycle World offices today and I saw that crazy race bike that they're going to be selling. Nice, yeah, That yeah. Scout, and it's, uh, it's insane. Yeah. You know, I don't even know if I should be saying anything about it, yeah, but yeah, I yeah. saw it and it's nuts and it's supposed to be as close to the production version as so, and it's... That's, they it, are going to do a production version. Then. That's what I keep hearing, unofficially, yeah. but I mean, I think um, yeah. it's, it's got to be there. Yeah, yeah. If there's a market for it, why would they not? Exactly. Yeah, cause, yeah I heard a lot of... Uh, a lot of things. I remember seeing the pictures of that thing on like Instagram, and people were tripping out on yeah. that thing. I mean, even I, for one, was like, "They'll never make that." Yeah. But you know, all all uh, all things point to that getting built, and that's going to turn in the whole game on its ear for sure. Yep. The competition's out there to make people either make moves or, or sit in the in the in the back of the room and right. say, "I wish I would have done that." And I think that that goes through the whole spectrum of the industry. I mean, yep. even you know, I mean, like guys like you who started in a garage business, yep. just doing things to make sure that people are getting hip to the right things, dude. Yep. You know, I I can't commend you enough for doing that, yeah, taking a big know. jump, you know, yeah. and anybody that knows you online or in person knows that you dedicate your life to it. Yep. And there's a ton of guys out there doing that, whether they have small shops or they're doing it out of their garage or they're doing it on the side of their machining business or whatever yep. else. I mean, I really like seeing that too. And that's what keeps an industry going. Yeah. That's what kept skateboard going yep, is, sure. you know, rider owned companies. When it, during the low years, that's what kept BMX going in the low years when, you know, not every kid had a BMX bike. And it's happening now with young adults buying Harleys. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know it, it is crazier now seeing the kids that own Harleys now. I mean, when I was their age, I couldn't even fathom, you know, maybe I was doing too many drugs or whatever, but. <laughs> was, well, I think it was always unattainable. Whether yep. it be the bikes that have something to do with anything or, you know, the price, it's cost prohibitive, but not now a decent pickup truck's $35,000. Yeah. You know, a diesel pickup truck with four wheel drive is almost a hundred thousand bucks. Yeah. So, I mean, a $13,000 Dyna or an $8,000 nice Sportster yep. is attainable to a kid that works a 40 hour work week now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, when I, when I started in this industry, you know, I started at Daytech um, in the early 2000s and doing the, we were building all the frames for the big, you know, fat tire mm -hmm. choppers, West Coast choppers, American Iron Horse, Big Dog, you know, all these companies. And I remember those, at that time, I mean, that, that was, man, those bike, $100,000, $120,000 bikes. And I'm, I remember seeing them and being around them all the time. I'm like, there's no fucking way I'm ever going to have one of these. Right. <laughs> you yeah, know? That was the bottom line. Yeah. yeah. Shit. None of those companies are in business anymore. None of them. Yeah. And now you can buy those same bikes for five grand. You can buy them for what the motor's worth. Yep. Exactly. A lot of people do. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of sad. And, uh, and I still have a lot of respect for those bikes. I, I really would want to build one one day yeah. just to have one. I think all of us from that era always like it's the thing you could never afford. I mean, yep. that's why like I piece together $2,000 shitty BMX bikes yep. that I couldn't afford as a kid because I was a poor ass kid, yep. you know? And it's the same thing with building a badass Harley or building a badass car, something you couldn't have when you were younger. Yep, for and sure. And it's kind of funny and weird, you know, because then you look at old dudes with their Easter egg colored hot rods and you're like, I'm becoming that guy. I, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right behind you, buddy. Right. And I mean, that's just kind of the way it that is. It is like the next thing. I keep looking at old cars lately and like, oh man, I'm like, if I had more space, I would be, I would already have one, but I don't I, have the space, and I'm kind of glad I don't have the space right now. You I, know? I've gotten out of the vintage car game. Oh, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't have anything to do with them, man. Yeah. And every once in a while, one will pop up, and I'm like, man, I want that, I want that car. I could sell two bikes and get that car, and then I'm like, where am I gonna put it? Yep. 
Yep. You know, I got 15 bikes in my garage. Like, yeah. There's no way I can even put a car in there. And, <laughs> right. And I'm I live sure. in LA, so if I buy a Chevrolet, dude, it's like 48 hours before it gets stolen. Yep, that's so true. So then I have to buy a Ford, and who wants that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I like that where you live is, is depicting what you buy. Yeah, and if it's going to get stolen or not. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. You know, we got to do a lot of stuff with you last year, mm -hmm. um, you know, at least be at a lot of the same events and stuff, uh, you know, do EDR and everything. What, what was your, like, highlight for last year of uh, all the stuff you get to do? Man, I mean, if you know my deal and my traveling schedule, you know, I'm usually gone a week a month traveling, if not more, to different bike events and, and uh, things. And I mean, EDR, you know, the El Diablo run, it really for me is, is a highlight of the year. Um, just because, you, you know, it's not a very corporate deal mm -hmm. and you just get to ride, you know, my girlfriend Maggie got to ride with me on the back of the bike and, you know, we had a great time and yeah. great people, you know, and nobody looks at you wrong when you're all fucked up on God knows what walking down the street. <laughs> so, I mean, you're in Mexico, everybody expects that. Yeah. Uh, that's really one of the highlights. And then, of course, you know, the hot bike tour for me every year, you know, since it's been my baby, you know, I, I, I always love that. and. For us, you know, we, we've kept a lot of TV and crap out of it because we have so many high profile builders. Mm -hmm. We want them to feel like it's more of a vacation and a fun thing that they can do with other people that show up and ride with them. Because yeah. as you know, you know, when cameras come out, egos come out and mm -hmm. we don't want any of that. And, uh, you know, I've been told by many of these guys that we invite for the build off that it's the best thing they they do all year, which Hell is yeah. pretty cool. You know, it's pretty laid back. And I mean, where else can you sign up for a ride for a thousand miles and ride next to, you know, Zach Ness and, Ar and Arlen Ness and, and all the Nesses and, you know, yep. RSD, all the boys from them and, you know, John yeah. Shope and all that stuff like you can sit at a gas station, you know, drinking a soda with them, filling up and pick their brain on everything. It's, it's a pretty cool event, you know, and then yeah. we hang out every night at a different location and party. So, I mean, all that put together with the rolling rally, like it, it's really cool, yeah. you know? And then Sturgis this year was super cool for me because I stayed on site in one of those little boxes that the chip has. Yeah, and I nice. pretty much stayed at the chip the whole time, which I never do. I only go there for concerts or for bike shows. So that experience for me was was pretty cool. Yeah. I really like that. Hell Rather yeah. than staying in Deadwood or downtown, which I've done a million times. Yep, yep, yep. So you know when we were talking about your uh, stable, I heard you say you have a few old choppers and yep. that's old choppers is was my first few bikes that I had yeah. before I got into twin cams and stuff. Um, what do you what do you got and, and what is you know what's um, the rundown? I have an old shovel head that's just a mishmash of parts. Mm -hmm. um, it's on a stock early shovel head frame that's been hard tailed and that bike's just a super thrasher. Uh, I have a super nice uh, legitimate fifty pan head that Chris at LA Speed Shop built with me and Buckwild painted it and uh, it's a pretty crazy bike. It was on the cover of Street Chopper last year. Nice. Uh, I really like that bike. Um, you know, I have an early shovel head FXR that's in a million pieces that uh, I'll most likely be putting a new SNS motor in. Still, uh, I want to put an SNS shovel head in it. Hell yeah. So it has that look. I mean, I really like old bikes, like you said, you know, yeah. and, and it's, it's hard to keep them running. It they're, is. they're not so comfortable to ride, and it's, you know, cost prohibitive for a lot of people, and that's what makes them great. Yep. You exactly. know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to know a lot of people who I, who I call the chopperati or the, or the chopper nerds or the chopper elitists that, you know, they got 15 knuckleheads in their yep. garage and, you know, every spare part known to man from knuckle to the beginnings of shovel. And, you know, I'm fortunate to know those guys and pick their brains and have them help me put yeah. stuff together, you know. And it's really cool to see that. And it's definitely a large subsection, as you know, of, of the culture that we yep. live. You yep. know, the diner sure. guys and the chopper guys and the bagger guys and, you know, the yep. cholo dudes. And, you know, it's really cool to see that. Yeah. But everybody loves and respects a panhead or a knucklehead. Oh, I don't care where sure. you came from if you're a Harley guy. And yeah. that's really cool to see. And there's still guys building them, you know, yeah. and they don't need aftermarket parts. Yep. You know, you go to the swap meet, you know, you, you have your buddies, you have eBay, yep. and, and you build a bike from that. You yep. know, the only new things you put on it are like, you know, cables and tires. Yep, for sure. You know, and to see that, you know, something survive and go on so well without needing the aftermarket or the industry, yeah. except for you know, gaskets and oil, you know? Yep, yep, it's exactly. pretty cool to see that that subsection, due to Born Free and Mama Tried and things like that, you know, and even the smoke out, like that 
perpetuating that scene. And it's not, it's not really like up and down, down and up, choppers are dead, choppers are here, choppers are there. Like, it's pretty stable now. Yeah, it really is. Know? Yeah, for a while there, you know, when I kind of started getting out of it, I, I thought it was kind of dying off, and that's probably just because my uh, view, point of view was changing, you know? Um, but uh, I've actually had some plans this year to hopefully build a, a pair of choppers because my chick wants a chopper too. Cool. So it might happen, we'll see, you know? Um, the 2018 model that we just picked up was kind of a, a surprise for us, you know? Didn't think that was going to happen, so that happened. So now, I'm gonna build that before choppers, but Fair. I got choppers on the mind. You That's know? good, man. <laughs> See, and it, it, what I dig about you, and what I dig about a lot of people that ride, is you embrace the whole thing. Yeah, you know. And that's what's really cool. Whether yeah. you know, as long as it's an American V twin, you're down. Oh yeah, I love. So. I can't. I mean, I, a lot of these. I, you know, we talk to a lot of people all the time, and, and you know, you see these people. Yeah, like, oh yeah, you know, my, somebody went down. Man, I don't think I'm gonna ride anymore. And man, I mean, I've gone down. Actually, one of our buddies just got hit by a car last Saturday, right behind me. You know, I dislocated his shoulder, totaled his bike, sw swing arm ripped out of the bike. Like it was gnarly. <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm like. I mean, obviously, I wasn't going to ride anymore that day because I'd have taken to the hospital. But I mean, I'm next exactly. day. I'm on my bike. I'm like, well, I mean, that, that's kind of the thing. And I tell people, and that you know, everybody tells me it's dangerous. And everybody in Los Angeles that turns on the TV, there's a motorcycle fatality no. on the friggin' whatever freeway system we have. And I just tell people it's this. You know, if of course it's dangerous, but is your need? greater than the danger of riding the bike yep. to ride the bike and I always say yes yeah you know my dad is parapl paraplegic from a motorcycle accident oh, wow. that happened when I was six years old Damn, like man. I was it's funny that this is my life because yep. it's case in point that you cannot tell me I can't do anything because yep. I'll make it my life's work to do <laughs> and guess what yeah. you know I was forbidden to ride motorcycles forbidden to do anything off-road on-road anything you know and as soon as I had enough money together, I bought a Vespa off my buddy. Yep. And I kept it on the side of the house where my dad couldn't see it or get to it. And I would push it down the alley and start it and go ride it. Yeah. And you know, then they, then came the Harley and then came the job and everything else. So yeah. it's like, it's pretty funny, you know? Yep, I is. do this for a job. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah. It's a, I always just tell people, man, it's, it's not for everybody. No. You know, some people buy them and they think it's for them and uh, you know, something happens and it's it's not, no. you know? Because I've gone down, I've crashed. Oh, know, yeah, me too. And you know, you take the, push the bike back, put it in the garage, bend some things back to where, you know, it's rideable and then I'm back on it, you know, until yeah. new parts come. I'm the same way. It's like, man, I just can't, I, it's hard to stay off of them. No, I can't. Yeah. I never will, you know, <laughs> no. until I'm incapacitated enough so I can or right. dead. And, and <laughs> then by that time, they'll have those sweet, uh, you know, trike wheels that come down after you've taken, you know, yeah. when you're slowing oh, yeah. down so you don't go to have I've trike ridden, I've ridden a few bikes with those, man. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. I like that, man. I think I'd be a sidecar guy. I'd have to buy, like, a big Great Dane or something and then be a sidecar yeah. guy. That would be my lifestyle if I couldn't but ride You're going to sit in the sidecar and drink beers? Yeah, and the dog will drive. Yes, I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell my chick, man, we need to get a sidecar because and you could just ride me around and I'll just sit in the sun mm -hmm. car with like a keg and hang out. That's perfect. You'll be my Uber. <laughs> I mean, you know, all intents and purposes, you could buy a slingshot and do the same thing. Oh, uh, yeah, we shouldn't talk about those. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, I tell people, you know, it's my job to ride all these things. Yeah. And I tell people, man, if you, if you go into it thinking, oh, well, it's blah, blah, blah. And if you're a car guy, you think it's blah, blah, blah. Yeah. If you go into it and get behind the wheel of a slingshot and... You don't think it's a car. You don't have any preconceived anything. Yep, non-biased. And you get in the thing, it's fun as hell. I'm sure it is. You know, you look like Batman driving it, but yeah. some people want to look like Batman driving it. They bikes. do, they you do. You know, and it's funny. A case in point is Ed Subius, you know. He's pretty devout racer, hooligan, yep. you know, traditionalist. And I was like, you should take that thing home and take it through the canyon one day. And he's like, do I have to ride anything up on it? I was like, no. And he's like... Can I wear a full face helmet so nobody sees me? And like he didn't want it. He <laughs> yeah. didn't want anything to do with the slingshot. And 45 minutes later, once he made it through the canyon, he was like, "This thing is fucking awesome." Oh, I bet. So I mean, that's kind of the thing. If you go into it with preconceived notions or a tough guy attitude, yeah. Yep. But if you're just some dude wanting some fun for 30 grand or whatever they are, yep. it's pretty rad because you're not getting anything close to that for under 100 grand yeah. otherwise. At the end of the day, it's just a vehicle, you know. It's, uh, you know, if you do look at it that way, I'm sure they are fun. I like, I'll ride, like I said, I mean, I'm, I'm diehard Harley. Yeah. Uh, 100%, you know, you won't find me, you know, owning anything else besides Harleys, you know, that for, are for the street. But if somebody wants to let me ride something, drive something, or give me something, mm -hmm. <laughs> I go. definitely want to try out anything. <laughs> of course, you know, and that's what's so funny about it. And 
you know, and it, I, being a Harley guy, you know, comes with a, you know, a diehard Harley guy, comes with a lot of baggage and yep. a lot of stuff. You know, your buddy rolls up on some crazy KTM and you're like, oh man, thing's bad. How much is it? Oh, it's half the price of your bike. Oh. Yeah. It's three times the technology. And you're like, yeah, but it's but fucking it's, bright orange and yeah, it's disco. And like, it's not a Harley. And it's not a fucking Harley. <laughs> Can you put a badge on it at least? Right. Can we do something with this? Like those, oh man, those BMW sport bikes, man. Yeah. The, or the adventure bikes. I want to try. Oh, those. the GSs, man. They're amazing. I've, I've, I've been Googling on them, like, you know, like watching them and stuff. And I know a couple people that have one, and I've never rode one yet. But oh, as soon they're... as one passes, you know, comes across time, I'm able to ride, I'm jumping they on They are cool, man. Yeah. You know, seeing all those, all the guys from, you know, the, the other magazines that, do a bunch of adventure stuff in there and they always have them and they're all yeah. decked out in all their climb gear and they have all the aluminum bags on yeah. it. I was like, you literally can go anywhere on those right? as long as you have gas. That's sick, yeah. man. Uh, I never rode a Harley with like dirt tires on until recently actually when we finished the flat track bikes mm -hmm. and I finally got out there and got to ride and I'm like, Man, this could be fun, like even building some Enduro Sportsters, yeah. you know, just like that one Biltwell just did. Yeah, that one's really nice, you know. There's a ton, you know, the 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 there's so much you can do with a Harley platform, especially with a Sportster frame, like yeah. pre-rubber mount Sportster frame. They're dirt cheap, and you can make a race bike out of it, enduro, yeah. something in the middle, yeah. and they're just fun and cheap, you know? Yeah, for real. And, you know, the bottom ends on those just go forever. Yeah. You know, I, it's funny because, you know, uh, Pat Patterson from Lead Sled's a good friend of mine, and I've known him forever, and he's built hundreds of Sportster choppers and, and cool cool bikes out of Sportsters. And uh, he's told me he's had to do maybe two bottom ends on all these bikes that he's ever done. Damn, that's crazy. And unknown mileage on some of them, yeah, some yeah. of these bikes he finds and puts a 1250 kit from SNS on there and away they go. Damn. Yeah, and it's, that's, that's why they haven't changed that motor. Yep. You know, look at yeah. that Evo Sporty motor's been around forever. Yep. You know, pre-rubber mount and rubber mount and other than that, that they have not changed to this day. No. It's a badass motor that just keeps chugging along. Really I've always loved sports shirts. Yeah, me I too. Do. Unfortunately, I'm a giant person and, and I feel like yeah. I'm bear riding a tricycle on them. See, I'm like the cutoff being 5'10 <laughs> and like 200 pounds, you <laughs> yeah. know. To see Subius ride that bike and race that bike, oh, you yeah. know, the brown bear, man, he gets down. He it's does. It's really cool He's to see He's a champion. That. Yeah. I've, uh, I've thought about, you know, because we built the bike and we have some uh, one of our buddies Sully races it, mm -hmm. but I've thought about going out there and racing. And, and uh, between uh, myself, Subius, and uh, Brandon Beardrench and the Rusty Butcher team, <laughs> I figured we should just three race together in our, our own little hefty league, you know? It's like a thousand <laughs> pounds of man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. And 700 pounds of bike. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to see us get wadded up in the corner. Oh, uh, no. It'd be cool, though, to it see that. Be they should have weight classes now. Right? We like, have to, we like have to ride speedos, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, and seeing, you know, to, to talk about the racing thing and how big it's gotten and, and kind of how quickly companies have accepted it yep. and wanted to be part of it. And of course, you know, the Indian Harley, you know, war of yeah. the, the teens and 20s and 30s is now back, you know, yep. and, you, you know, I, I hear it from everybody, you know, oh, this guy's riding Indy now or oh, this guy's yeah. Harley guy, and blah, blah, blah. And these guys are, it's pretty fun, professional and hooligan, you know, and it, the hooligan thing got, got kind of too serious, too quick. And luckily, you know, Roland and, and Cam got together and did that super hooligan yep. series. So it kind of separated you know that and yeah. you know as far as I was always concerned with racing you know you have professionals with AMA cards and you have people that don't and yeah. then to see that get kind of muddy just because dudes wanted to have fun on bikes you know guys that have you know big contracts for racing yeah. real bikes yeah. going and racing some dude that barely put a sports together and rode it to the track is not really cool no it's not um, and you know we talked about this with somebody the other day actually um, and in and, 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 it's funny because I have the same feelings that you have, and they were made a, made a pretty good point though. It's like, well, that's racing. That's how racing's been. Not, I mean, not just motorcycle. Well, that's, that's why there's classes of racing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't, you know, you don't have a seven-year-old kid on a BMX, seven X kid BMX racing a double A pro. Yeah, true, true. Kid to get mowed over. So yeah. I mean, that's why you have classes, and I think that's cool with the super hooligan stuff, and then the straight other yeah, hooligan. Yeah, I definitely. And, we, you know, we've done a couple of races with the bike and traveled a little bit, you know, in Southern California, like, you know, keep it going for like Ventura and stuff. And uh, I definitely just like to keep it local. Yeah. Right, race the hooligan stuff, you know, have a good time, drink beers the whole time, you know, like 
basically, you know, it's like, oh, this is perfect. I feel right at home here fucking right. off all day. You right, know? and that's what, how it started, <laughs> yep. you know? Dudes just, you know, bringing a six pack and their tools on their back and riding the bikes to the yeah. to whatever place they were doing it. Yeah, it's a great time. I mean, the, tr the trucker cross events that we've done with oh, Mark on Rusty So Butcher. badass, man. Oh, I, I can't, you know, the first one, like, you know, in his first, first event, uh, what was it, earlier last year, the first one, I was like, oh, let's, let's see how this goes. Yeah. I mean, it went flawless. Oh, yeah. I was so, I, like, I was like, man, you really did a lot of work. And it was so much fun. And then the second one, I mean, followed suit, right? Yeah. You know, I'm like, man, we can do these once a month. That'd I be love great. that, man. It's super cool. <laughs> yeah. I just like going, I mean, that's the, and that's the biggest thing, though. Like, I don't know, I love about motorcycles. Like, the, the group of people that are just actually out here to have fun. Yeah. You know, a lot of people take motorcycles very seriously. A lot of people, you know, um, but at the end of the day for us, it's like, I laugh too much and like to tell too many dick and fart jokes <laughs> to take it too seriously. I'm the same way. You know, I just want to go out, have fun with my friends. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate that, you know, motorcycles pay my bills, yeah. you know, and, um, you know, we've worked hard to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of the way it is. You know, I, I've, I've struggled and pushed my whole life, but I tell people, man, your fun is my job. Yep. You know, I got to be the same place you're at when you're on vacation. Yep, exactly. And I've got to make it my work. So yeah. there's kind of, you know, there, yeah, hit and it's, a, there, it's yeah. a very hard thing to, to do. For sure. Sometimes. All the shows everybody gets to go to and have fun and fuck around at, we're always all working, trying right. to stay sober. Yeah. <laughs> trying is the word. <laughs> trying, exactly. <laughs> uh, this is the first year at Born Free we're actually not camping out and partying all night. We're like, we actually have like responsibilities now. Yeah, you know, maybe we should just go home and like get a good night's sleep to be there again at six in the morning. That's the way. Man. Usually, I'm like, Ugh, fuck, it's five in the morning. I gotta go to bed for an hour. <laughs> Welcome to adulthood. Right, man. <laughs> Adulting is not fun, uh, but no, man. I definitely, uh, it's a, uh, it's great to be able to do something that you actually enjoy doing. And yeah. love, you know, um, all my life, I've always wanted a job where I loved doing what I'm doing. And I've never had one that I didn't. Yeah, see, that's that's oh, that's kind of crazy, you know. Yeah. It's like you know, this dude at this brewery we're sitting at, man. Homeboy wanted to do it and he did it. Yeah, it's you wanted to do it and you did it. Yeah, you know, I wanted to do it and I did it, and that's people look up to you, and a lot of people are jealous of you oh, because yeah. you can do it, and, yep. or you got lucky. You yep. know, it, it, it's half luck, half hard ass fucking work. Yeah, because luck only takes you so far right. at the end of the day. Yeah, and you know, it, it's really it's a it's a it's a hard thing that to do when you want to have so much joy and love in your life for your job yep. that you know your personal life bleeds through 100 percent and you don't have a personal life anymore yeah. no. and it's hard like once you you know like i told you before we started filming this you know be careful what you wish for and yeah. look you're in the you're in the throes of that right now oh yeah and uh, you know i've done it man and it's my life and you know the phone rings 24 7 and yep. you know my phone's constantly buzzing and it's just the way it is. And if you're not willing to take that on and work 24 seven, then you oh, yeah. might as well stay at your nine to five job. Oh, exactly. And that's very true because uh, I mean, you know, there, there's definitely days, I'm sure everybody goes through it where you're just like, man, some one day I just want to sit down and relax, you know, on a Sunday, but my phone keeps going and, yeah. and well, that's, I guess I'm clocking in, you know, that's work. That's what I chose to do. And, what you, and you at know. the end of the day, man, I, I, I love it. I think that's gonna about wrap up this time. I mean, um, I don't know about you, I'm definitely uh, down to do this again and sit down with you and have some fun and bullshit. Um, I think it's really fun to do. Uh, wanted to say thanks to Town Park Brewery for letting us come in here, you know, um, film and, and have a nice setting and everything and, and meet up and hang out and bullshit. And, Heck yeah. You know. Um, Anaheim, California, right where I'm born, man. Right here, Gotta yeah. keep it real. Right? <laughs> Serious, that's cool. Um, but thanks, Jeff. Thanks yeah, for thank having you, us. Man. Thanks Seriously. for uh, you know, thanks sitting you. down with us and everything. Man. Anytime, man. Right on. Appreciate it. Cool. cool.